Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is going to be a quick one, I hope. I wanted to do my top 10 easy uncommon plants in my collection, in my experience, in my opinion. So I had this idea for a little while to do a list kind of like this because I'm finding that a lot of lists um, on YouTube that list the easy, easy care plants aren't necessarily easy in my experience. And one example would be like Philodendron Milano Chrysum. I find Milano's like so hit or miss. So I thought I put together a list of plants that I find easy and based off of my own experience. Um, I'm gonna try to make it kind of quick because I do have to go to Charmaine's house as soon as I can to go pick up Pudge. Um, Charmaine's away in California this weekend for a wedding and they couldn't take Pudge with him so I agreed to watch him which means that we have three dogs in the house this weekend which is going to be a handful so um, I need to not spend too much time working on this video but also I want to take like Pudge and Huxley out they have like a lot of fun together so I have a list of 10 plants not all of them are um, aeroids but the majority of them are and I will go through what I find easy about them, but I will just preface this by saying like over the past 9 to 12 months, I've been finding it more difficult to keep up with plant care. And this is because I've gotten really busy at work and I just have a lot of plants. So as they're growing, their needs are kind of like always popping up and I'm not able to keep up with the plants so much. but. The biggest challenge for me is getting plants repotted in time and getting plants watered in time. So a lot of these plants have been sitting in the same pot for a long time. Because I grow a lot of plants in greenhouses, so I have a grow tent, I have a bunch of exoterra terrariums, I have a Millsbo cabinet. Um, because I have all these things in place for my plants, humidity and warmth aren't, aren't usually um, a challenge for me but the because I'm so busy repotting and watering plants on time has been a big challenge for me so that's going to be a big factor in why I find a lot of plants to be easy because it doesn't take a lot for them to be growing happily but I'll go into detail for each plant and yeah so let's just get started first up is philodendron gloriosum I've shown this so many times on my channel because it's just it's just my baby. So I've recently repot this into a Muji like storage box and in the same um, pond mix that it used to be in. So that's pond, coarse perlite and orchiata bark. It's already started to root really nicely in here so you can see like the pink stuff that's all new roots. It'll take a while for the Gloriosum to outgrow this pot because it's up to here right now. It has all this space to crawl along. This grows inside my grow tent because I was committed to giving this plant as much warmth and even lighting as possible. And you can see that all the leaves are facing forward and it doesn't have, well I'm trying to limit the amount of light that it gets. But this has been so easy since I imported it last year. It rooted really quickly. It rooted in the same kind of bin conditions that I showed in my import video. Other plants from that import have been chopped a bunch of times. I have this like whole farm going in my grow tent. I haven't lost a single propagation. They're just really easy going and they can grow outside of a greenhouse but they will grow slower in my experience and it's been growing so quickly and happily in the tent that I just don't really have the heart to take it out and it's like a really nice you know welcome when I open the tent to see this gloriosum so in my opinion every single collector needs a gloriosum and I if you were to choose one especially now that they're getting a little bit more accessible definitely get the white veins one so because this is like a um, understory plant meaning that it crawls along the forest floor it's not going to be like searching for sun I think it does better under like moderate lighting so not not super super bright so you'll see like especially on this leaf here it's a little bit bleached because it got a little bit close to the light when I kind of shifted things around but where's the newest leaf this leaf here is the newest one it grew and is kind of shaded by 
this leaf here and look how nice and dark that is. If you go too low, it will kind of start to like bend and search for the lights and the petioles will get all like wavy and stuff. But um, that's not to say that the plant's not healthy. It's really easy to grow them really healthy. And I find them super drought tolerant too. So many times when um, in the previous pot that this was in, it was like getting super root bound and it would go days and days and days being bone dry and the plant itself like never drooped it never like lost its perkiness the only challenge i will find with this plant is that i'm having trouble sizing it up to be really giant you'll see that like all the all the leaves are about the same size i'm playing around with a new fertilizer and a new microbial slash mycorrhizal inoculant so I'll report back if I find anything different but since this gloriosum has lived in the same tent since I imported it any changes that happen with a plant I think are gonna be purely nutritional I'll be happy to give lots of um, updates on this guy because it's probably like my top three favorite plants in my entire collection All right, moving swiftly on. Speaking of subpar conditions, this is my philodendron glorious. So this one I've mentioned before, this one lives in my plant room, but it sits in like a corner that gets almost no light whatsoever. And it's just been growing pretty steadily and sizing up as well. So this was the first leaf grown in that dark corner and you can see the size up from the leaf before it, which is this one. So this going on to this. Um, it get, it's been living in like really low humidity in that corner, probably like 30 to 40%. Um, and it desperately needs to be on like a proper pole. So I will get this on a lazy moss pole, but you can see that like it just doesn't give a f like it will just keep growing and growing and this is the thing that I find um, so you've heard of hybrid vigor when the plant kind of gets the strength from both parents and they're just a little bit more tolerant of you know underwatering or humidity and it grows a little bit quicker than it's like pure parents and I find that true with Glorious. I don't necessarily find that true with like the Philodendron Splendid. So Glorious is Philodendron Gloriosum crossed with Melanochrysum. Um, Splendid is Melanochrysum and Varicosum. And I find Glorious to be way easier to grow, way more forgiving, way easier to propagate, way easier to size up. Or of all the like Philodendron hybrids that are commonly circulated, I i would recommend glorious when it matures and gets those like tall milano chrysum lobes with like the gloriosum veining oh it's just absolutely amazing so yeah just a quick mention on this one even though it's kind of like you can see how neglected it is i kind of just like slapped it on this like pole that i had it's gonna pull the curtain back a bit so you can get some sunlight on there Oh yeah, that shimmer is so pretty. Okay, yeah, all right, moving on. Okay, next up, ooh. So this is my Philodendron Florida Beauty. I'm using this plant to represent Florida Beauty and the Florida Ghost. I find both of these plants quite easy so long as they're rooted and um, Florida Beauty is kind of notorious for being hard rooters if you don't have uh, live aerial roots on it, but once you have the roots, I find them super forgiving of low humidity, of temperature. One thing that I I struggle with is giving plants too much light. So growing in a greenhouse with grow lights, like you struggle to find plants that would be happy like closer to the light. So everything kind of like has to be quite far away. So Florida Goes and Florida Beauty are two plants that I find are tolerant of high light and won't get bleach the way um, other aeroids will so it's kind of nice to have that balance um, so this one died back not really died back but it went it reverted back to juvenile after like it got mealybugs and 
I had to chop it back and it lost a lot of roots. So this is recovered now and it's now growing so fast since I got it onto this pole. So you can see that, where are the roots? You can see right here, lots of nice roots happening in this um, pole. One thing that I find really helpful with um, Florida Beauty and the Florida Ghost is that when they get root bound, they'll just stop growing. You'll see the caterpillar for the next growth and it'll just be like staying exactly the same for weeks and weeks and weeks. And that's when you know you need to repot. And every time I repot it and upsize the pot with these guys, they just start growing immediately. Um, and then they'll just stop again when they're root bound. And it's really easy to, to like, for the plant to communicate like that is super helpful. I feel like Florida Beauty is getting a lot more accessible. If you're able to get one, I definitely get one with aerial roots if it's just a cutting. Um, if it's already rooted, then even better. But they're quite easy to grow. I'm excited for this one to size up. I'm just gonna switch it up real quick to a couple of Hoyas. So this is my Hoya Nicholsonia New Guinea Ghost. Um, I showed this in a recent Hoya video. I forget which one. Um, at the time, it had uh, these leaves had just emerged and they were tiny. They're still expanding, but they're a lot bigger now. So the thing about New Guinea Ghost that I love is how quick it grows. Like they sprouted these three leaves at the same time and it's working on the next ones right now. If you search a tag on Instagram, you'll see like so many like full bushy plants. And what I'm told is that they grow super fast. Now that the price has come down quite a lot since last year, I highly recommend this as a Hoya that's like silvery and beautiful. And like, it's so hard to get Hoyas to be like lush and bushy that when you can get it fairly easily with one species, then it's like very rewarding. So I highly recommend this one. So this one was given to me as a rootless cutting with this leaf attached to it and it took a little while for it to root in pond so I just got it potted in pond right now and this leaf was like super saggy and wrinkly for the longest time but it never dropped and then one day it just wasn't wrinkly anymore and I knew it was rooted and just kind of like kept that substrate moist so that just tells me that it's quite easy to propagate as well so from being cut to the point we are now with three extra leaves it's been about about four months. Definitely one of my easier uncommon Hoyas. The next one, I don't know if you would call this uncommon, but this is my Hoya Linearis. Also a very fast grower. So like the frustrating thing I guess with Hoyas is how slowly they grow, but Linearis is just constantly growing. This, I've mentioned before, I grew this from a single node cutting. So it was, which one was it? these two leaves here and it was cut there i believe yeah and like it's such an easy propagator too i've had it grow really long and then i'll just like chop a section off and literally just stick it back into this the pond i keep the substrate a little bit more um, wet in the time that it's rooting but i've never lost a cutting that way and like it's just continues to grow and grow and grow and branch off so like i can't believe I mean, I can believe it, but it's just like kind of crazy to believe that this came from a single node and now we've got this long trailing thing. When a Hoya can grow faster than an Aeroid, that's, that's a winner in my books. So easy, so amazing. Okay, next, next, next. Okay, ooh, okay, next. Okay, I've talked about this plant so many times. But I gotta talk about it again. So Dean McDowell, as everyone knows, is a cross between Gloriosum and Pastazanum. This is my plant that's been growing in the same shitty little pot with super old stinky lechuza pond for over a year now. And it's crawled right out of the pot and it just continues to grow. Um, I've been growing this in my living room all throughout the winter. This dries out all the time. I always forget to water it. It never droops. And I think this is just like an amazing, amazing plant to be growing out in regular conditions because it just doesn't give a f Like this kind of leaf forming in 30, 20 to 30% 30 humidity in the dead of winter, come on. 
I just love this plant so much. I do find it pushes out extra floral nectar when it's stressed and I do think that it could be like cold stress or like, you know, lack of humidity that stresses it a little bit. So you'll find, especially on the petioles and the backs of the leaves, you'll find, let's we'll see if we can, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's kind of all covering the petiole here. I don't think it really like damages it too much, but you will see a little bit. Let me show you a leaf. You can kind of see some speckling around the sinus here. So it's not terrible. Like it's barely noticeable from a distance, but if you don't want that to happen, you can just go in and, and kind of like wash it off um, and wipe it with some like water, maybe with like a light Castile soap solution. Oh, you can see, yeah, this, this leaf has tons of it on the back these little beads of syrup but other than that i think the best crawling philodendron to grow in regular household conditions is just so forgiving it's good with um slightly lower light just like the gloriosum being like an understory plant and like the best thing is that it's good with low humidity and it's tolerant of lower temperatures too like as it this one basically lived next to my balcony door all throughout the winter, it's next to a heater that's just constantly pumping out like hot air, so it's super dry, but also like drafts from like when I opened the balcony door. Um, it would just like, it would just hit this plant all throughout the icy winter. It just like, it didn't show that cold damage at all. So that's my big Dean McDowell. But I also wanted to show you a little baby one that's starting to be not a baby anymore. I showed this one in my very, very first video um, and it's grown quite a bit since. So at the time I was acclimating that out of a prop box into my um, plant room, just like the general plant room, not, not inside my greenhouse. It's grown a couple leaves since. So this was the first leaf that told me that it was adjusted to the lower humidity. And this is the newest leaf here. When it was adjusting though, it ripped itself coming out of the sheath so you can see the damage on this one. So I guess like if you're acclimating plants down to lower humidity, you kind of have to brace yourself for like one or two leaves to be like less than ideal. When it gets used to the new conditions, then you're good to go. So this one's sizing up pretty steadily. It does need a repot. We got roots coming out the bottom. The roots are all circling at the bottom as well. So I will get this probably, maybe I'll get it into like a wider pot and just let it crawl through the summer. I'm, I'm excited to get this one nice and big like my other one. So this one was grown from like a little piece of stem um, that was chopped off of Aaron's plant and it had no roots or anything. It took like a year and a half for it to start growing. But now that it's like, now that it's alive again, it's going so fast now. So yeah, Dean McDowell, definitely my top, top recommendation for big heart-shaped philodendron for regular living room conditions. Ugh. This is another good one. This is my philodendron Nangri Tents. It's, it's kind of, it's kind of a lot. It takes, up, this, this takes up a lot of space. This is grown in um, regular household humidity. Since the day that I got it imported from Equigenera, almost two years ago at this point, I think, yeah, almost two years ago. So I, at the time I didn't have a tent and I didn't have anything big enough to house this guy. So basically it acclimated in just regular humidity. In First I had it in water and then I had it in Lekka. And now it's been growing in pond for the past, oh, I don't know, at least a year. I'm gonna try to get some more natural light in here. Is this better? Ooh, that's not bad. Okay, this grows next to the Dean McDowell in my living room. Also puts out quite a bit of extra floral nectar. I, okay, all right, all right. This plant is too big. It's probably gonna hit the mic, but you might be able to see nectar right here near the top. I mean, it's kind of annoying, I guess, but it, I don't find that it's too bad. This orange stuff is just rust from my watering can and it kind of hit the leaf. There's nothing wrong with that one. 
One thing I find about Nangri Tents is that it does enjoy being root bound a little bit more and it will really try to fill out the pot before it gets going. So I am in no hurry to repot this one. Let me close the curtain again. Definitely a more understated plant, except for when uh, you get an emergent leaf and it'll come out of this bright pink caterpillar and it'll have like this bubble gum pink um, leaf for a little while. It fades pretty quickly, but my favorite part of the Nangri Tense is the petiole, which is just like this speckly red. I wouldn't call it hairy. Some people call it hairy, but it's just that it's just like such a beautiful, beautiful petiole. One of the most beautiful petioles in my opinion. So if you're ever on the fence, I think these have come down quite a lot in price. And I just think that they're just so great. And I think one of the reasons why it's so humidity tolerant is like how thick the leaves are. This feels like quite a thick leathery leaf. And I highly, highly recommend it. If I could get my Gloriosum this big this year, I would be very happy. I did want to talk about a couple of anthuriums. So this is my anthurium politiflorum. <sighs> this lives inside my exo with a lot of my anthuriums. It is extremely root bound in a mixture of moss and orchiata. And it is constantly constantly getting bone dry to the point where I have to like basically dunk it in water to get it to saturate again so it's it's in heavy need of a repot I'm definitely going to pot it in something that doesn't have holes on the side so it can retain the moisture a little bit better but because it's been drying out so much quicker lately because of like the sheer amount of roots in this pot it has decided to drop all the lower leaves so you can see a lot of these are yellowing off but on the plus side, the newer leaves, especially these three here, are still nice and dark, looking really healthy. So I don't really mind kind of like starting over the plant. If, the, if it drops all these like smaller leaves and just keeps these strappy ones going, I don't really mind. And I'll get it into probably like a tall glass container and uh, maybe in kind of moss and bark and let it grow that way. So the thing that I love about Plutiflorum is that it doesn't stop growing. Like it's constantly, like once it's finished with the leaf, then it's working on the next one. And then it, it's not like super crazy fast, but it is steady and constant. That's what I love so much about like growing this plant because there's always a new leaf to look forward to. You don't, you're not dealing with dormancy the way that you do with a lot of anthuriums. So my camera overheated and shut off, so I'm not really sure where it cut off, but uh, I was just gonna say that if you're looking for a velvety anthurium that hangs, that wants to hang, um, because if you didn't know that pendant anthuriums will kind of grow downwards and they're always kind of like curving down, this is just like a really great plant to kind of fill the top corner of a shelf or a greenhouse and can't beat that freaking delicious, pleaty, sub velvety that color and the texture is just so freaking beautiful super rewarding plant to grow because it just does not stop if you feed it well i don't even think it needs very high humidity although i haven't tried but i have heard that they're pretty tolerant of lower humidity give it constant feed give it constant water especially when it's growing a new leaf so it expands nicely because this is what happens if you let it dry out while it's um, forming a new leaf. It just, it's just a little bit dwarfed like that. I definitely had to mention this because this is one of my easiest anthuriums. And I don't find anthuriums that easy, but this is quite an easy one. Okay, two more plants to go. This next one was always described as a difficult plant, but in my experience has been one of the easiest philodendrons I own. That is my philodendron patriciae. So I've mentioned this before, but this was um, a cutting off of Charmaine's plant and it had a stem about this big. It rooted in moss. It's grown in my tent this whole time. It just does not stop growing. And it's been like really, really tolerant of getting dried out. So I repotted this recently into a larger pot and soil with moss 
kind of around the stem because I didn't uh, I didn't get a pull on this one just yet so I just wanted to kind of like encapsulate the stem so the aerial roots could grow into something but before it was in a three inch pot in moss and on a weekly basis it would be dry to the point of crunchy it just never showed any signs of like drought stress and it just kept growing and I just like Based on my experience, I don't know how it got the reputation of being a difficult plant because it's been so freaking easy. From the point of being uh, propagated, it rooted easily, it started growing really easily. So it took to this recent repot quite well. Um, I can see that this caterpill is still growing larger and larger by the day. So if you're on the fence about Patricia based on its reputation, I don't really think that you have much to be afraid of, especially now I'm seeing they're way cheaper than they were before. Plus they're sending out, and I'm talking about like Equigenera and Equiflora, they're sending out like these massive giant specimens and they seem to be coming with better roots because these plants are kind of sitting with them for a little bit longer. They're not just like chopping and sending out because the demand has dropped so much. I think the plants are coming in with better roots just because they've been with the grower for a bit longer. But yeah, I had to mention the Patricia because I find this so easy going. Um, Jing has a really big one. She also says it's quite easy going. She has hers in Pond, I believe. I highly, highly, highly recommend. The only thing I will say is that it does seem to be a thirsty philodendron. But at the same time, when it dries out, it doesn't really throw too much of a fuss either. I'm just so happy that it's finally starting to like show more distinct pleats. It's been sizing up with each leaf like really really steadily without like a pole to climb. It just hangs in my tent and it's just looking wonderful. So philodendron patissier. Such a classic. Is this the last plant? Yes, this is the last plant. Okay, so so one last anthurium to talk about. This is my anthurium king of spades. So this is a trade name for this plant. I don't know if anyone really knows the exact parentage of this plant. I think it, this hybrid does originate from uh, Indonesia. I've heard a few things. I, it, I've heard that it ha it's like a Magnificum sort of hybrid. I've also heard it's a complex hybrid involving like select Crystallinum clones that show more like roundness, similar to like, I don't know, Dorayaki or something. I don't know if anyone really knows, but um, the red sinus and like the general redness kind of makes me believe that there is Magnificum in this. Um, it doesn't really have, it has like somewhat of a square-ish petiole or, or like, I mean, it's not square-ish, but it does have angles to it. But this is not an identification <laughs> video. This is, um, I just want to talk about this Anthurium being like really easy going. So knowing that it's a hybrid that does it's not super surprising that it is like a fairly fairly easy plant in that it's tolerant of a little bit of neglect and like it's just a little bit more forgiving overall but the thing that i loved about this is that like it's been really easy to propagate so i've taken at least two cuttings off this plant since i imported it and all of them have made it and they just started rooting right away so this one was cut just a few months ago and it this is with the top cutting and it's completely filled up this pot now it's not a quick grower but it's very very just tolerant and just like look how look how beautiful and round it is i would hazard a guess that this would be okay in living room conditions just because it's quite tolerant of drought in general so I, I would probably grow this in my living room if I, if I wanted to, but I enjoy seeing this in my exo, so I'm just gonna keep it there for the time being. But I had to mention this because, I don't know, just based on the way it looks, if it kind of, it makes me feel like it would be a difficult plant, but it's been nothing but easy going. It just doesn't grow that quickly, but I think anthuriums scare a lot of people based on humidity requirements, but there are so many great hybrids coming out that I think are really good for people to get into anthuriums with because they seem to be a lot more hardy and a little bit more vigorous. So yeah, that's my last plant to mention. Anthurium, king of spades. All right guys, that's it for today. I gotta go pick up Pudge now. Huxley, mommy's gonna go pick up Pudge now. 
Are you ready to run around like a maniac with Pudge? Yeah, you are? You are ready? Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please remember to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it so much. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>